friends, I welcome you all in this session. As you are aware in previous session we were discussing about sampling and sampling distribution and we have seen that if there is a population distribution available, then if we take a sample from the population and if we find out its mean, if we take one more sample again we find out its mean, then both these means would be different. And similarly, when you keep on taking samples from population, each sample mean would be different. So, when you draw distribution of these different sample means, it becomes sampling distribution. We have seen that the population mean and sampling mean was same, but so far as standard deviation is concerned, the standard deviation of population and the standard deviation of sampling distribution, they were different. Uh, and there was a relationship as well between the uh, standard deviation of population distribution and, st and uh, standard deviation which we call uh, uh, the standard error in case of sampling distribution. And the relationship was, it was like this is not it. Uh, is not it. So, uh, and we have also seen that uh, the uh, as you increase sample size, the uh, distribution of uh, the, the sampling distribution approaches towards normality, and this is known as central limit theorem. So, what is central limit theorem? Uh, in central limit theorem, whatever is the shape of population distribution, whether it is normal or non normal. As we increase sample size, the shape of sampling distribution approaches towards normality. We did work out one example as well in previous session. In today's session, we will see some more examples. So, let us say you have been given population mean as 8 and standard deviation as 3. Now, if we take a random sample of size 36. Now, what is the probability that the sample mean is between 7.8 and 8.2? So, how the distribution would look like first of all? It would be like this, is not it? So, you have got this mean is 8, is not it? Standard deviation is 3, is not it? Probability of sample mean between 7.8 and 8.2. So, let us say this is 7.8 and let us say this is 8.2, is not it. So, we need to calculate this area, is not it. So, how to proceed for this? First of all, we should get z value, right, which is x x i minus mu, is not it, divided by sigma. So, x, x 1 is 7.8 and x 2 is 8.2, is not it. So, let us find out z value and before z value you, you can calculate standard deviation as well for sampling distribution. So, this is the relationship between standard error of mean and population standard deviation and sample size. So, this value is 0.5. Let us look at this. So, for uh, we have to find out probability between x that is mean x bar varies between 7.8 to 8.2. So, this comes around minus 0 0.4 and plus 0 0.4. So, z is if you look at this you, your z scale, this is now your z scale, this is x scale, this is x scale, is not it this z scale. So, from mean this side it is minus 0 0.4 and this side it is plus 0 0.4. Now, let us look at the area under curve from mean to this, we let us look at what is this area. So, this 0.4 right z is equal to 0.4 is this is the one, is not it 0.1554. So, this area is 
point one double five four. Similarly, z is equal to four towards right side. Again, same area point one double five four. So you, this is now again point one double five four. So if you add these two, it becomes point point three one zero eight. So the probability that the mean would be between 7.8 and 8.2 would is approximately 31 percent. Let us look at this question. In a sample of 25 observations from a normal distribution with mean is this, standard deviation is this taken. What is the probability that mean is between 92 to 102? Find the corresponding probability given n is equal to 36. So, we have changed n from 25 to 36. So, we have increased sample size. So, what would happen to the uh, standard error? It would reduce, is not it? If you look at this formula, then as we increase n, this value would decrease, is not it? So, how the distribution would look like for this? mean is 98.6, standard deviation 17.2 and probability it is between 92, let us say this is 92 and this is 102. So, we need to calculate first of all z value from here to here, here to here and then this area and then this area and then we will add these two areas. Okay. So, let us look at this. So, when x is 92, so x minus mu divided by 3.44 which is this, because we have been given n is equal to 25, mu is equal to this and standard deviation is equal to this. So, this 3.44, so z when x is 92 which is 1.92 and z when x is 102 which is 0.99. So, let us let, let me redraw this z value. So, z mean is equal to 0 here z is minus 1.92 and here z is let us say 0.99 is not it. So, area from here to here z is equal to 0 to 1.92, right. So, 1.92. So, this is 1.9 and 2 is this 0.4725. So, this area is 0.4725. What about this area? What about this area? Again, z from here to 0 0.99, right. So, this 0 0.9 is this 0 0.99 is this point three eight one zero. This is here, right? Point three eight eight nine. Uh, this is the area, and the first one was point four seven two six, right? This is the one, isn't it? And this the one. So add these two areas, you will get this value is approximately 81 percentage. Now, for the same question if we increase sample size, then what what should happen? This value should decrease is not it. So, it was 3.44, now it is 2.87. We will calculate again z values. So, for z values would be it is 2.3. Now, if you look at this particular table, uh, values from here to right hand side all these are positive values and left hand side negative value. So, z is equal to 1 and z is equal to minus 1, the area under curve would remain same, is not it. So, when let us say z is equal to 2.3, right. So, 2.3 is where this is 2.30, right. So, this is 0.48. 9 3 here it is. What about 1.18? 1.1 is this, is not it? 
and 8 is here. So, 0 0.3810 which is here right this is the one. So, just add these two values right and this is your answer 87 percentage. Let us look at one more question. Mary Bartel, an auditor for large credit card company knows that on an average the monthly balance of any given customer is 112 dollars with a standard deviation of 56 dollars. So, mean is this and standard deviation is this is not it. If Mary audits 50 randomly selected accounts, what is the probability that sample average monthly balance is below 100. So, how it should be calculated? So, this is your distribution right mean is 112 standard deviation is 56 is not it and we have to see whether it is below 100. So, this is 100 right. Now, we have to see below 100 means which area should we calculate this area or this area. Just read the question carefully it is below 100 right. So, this is your 100 point right this is your 100. So, all this area which is below 100. So, we need this particular area right. Okay. So, how to do it? How to solve this question? First convert it into z value. So, this x minus x bar right. So, 100 minus 112 divided by 56 is not it. So, you will get some negative value of z and for this we will see this second part little later. So, part a. So, first of all calculate standard error which is 7.92 okay. and uh, z value is now 1.52 minus 1.52. So, let us look at what is that area. So, the area which would we would be getting is uh, uh, let us look at minus 1.52. So, 1.5 and this is 2.4357. So, what is this area? this area is let me draw distribution this is your mean and this is your x value which is 100 and we want this area and what what we have got is this area this is this 0.4357 is this area this area isn't it we are interested in calculating this area but we know that this entire area is 0 0.5. So, we will subtract this area from 0 0.5. So, we will get remaining area which is 0 0.0643. So, probability is 6.43 percentage right. Now, what is the probability that the monthly balance is between 100 and 130? 100 and 130. So, calculate z values. So, minus 150 minus 1.52 and 2.27 area just look at 1.5. So, 1.5 and 2 is this 0.43. So, this value is here and 2.27 2.27. So, this is 2.2 and 7 is this 0.4884 which is here. Okay, so, just add these two values. Why we are adding these two? Because we want to know this is your mean and this is 100 and this is 130 is not it. So, we have to add this entire area. Okay. Let us look at one more question. Junida Marinas, researcher for the Columbia Coffee Corporation is interested in determining the rate of coffee usage per household in United States. She believes that yearly consumption per household is normally distributed with unknown mean, but standard deviation is known which is 1.25. So, 
this is not known and standard deviation is 1.25. If Martinez takes a sample of 36 households and records their consumption of the coffee for one year, what is the probability that the sample mean is within one half pound of the population mean which is not known. So, let us look at let us say this is let us assume that population mean is this. So, we have to calculate what is the probability that the sample mean is within one half pound it means 0 0.5. So, plus 0 0.5 of this and and minus 0 0.5 of this. So, in this uh, range we have to find out probability. Second part is how large a sample must she take in order to be 98 percent certain that the sample mean is within one half pound of population mean. So, how large we need to find out sample size here is not it. So, what should be the sample size so that the 90 percent uh, 98 percent of the sample mean is within one half pound of population mean. Let us look at this. Since uh, we do not know the population mean, we have information about standard deviation and sample size. So, first of all calculate standard error, standard error of mean right which is 0 0.208. Now, within we have to find out uh, uh, probability where the mean is 1 half pound right. So, this is mu plus 0 0.5 and mu minus 0 0.5. So, when it is minus 0 0.5, so minus 0 0.5 divided by this sigma x bar and plus 0 0.5 divided by sigma x bar right. So, we will get z as z as minus 2.4 and plus 2.4. Let us look at what was the probability at z is equal to minus 2.4. So, this is 2 point 0.1, point 0.2 and point 0.3 and this point 0.4 right. So, point 0.47, 2.4 no no this 2.04 this value we have to look at 2.4 exactly. So, this is 2.4. So, this value is here is not it 0 0.4918, 2.4 positive side same value. So, you just add these two is not it. Now, the second part is how large a sample must she take in order to be 98 percent confident that the sample mean is within one half pound of the population mean. So, we know that this value is 98 percent. Now, since this value is known and this is already known from this equation. So, we you just calculate the value of n. So, it is 2.33 and when you solve this question for n it becomes 33.93. So, as good as 34 right. So, this the, these are couple of examples on sampling distribution. Now, let us look at uh, extension of sampling distribution and we will work out a couple of examples wherein uh, we have been given the probabilities and we need to find out the interval around mean. Till now what we were given? We were given intervals and we were found we were finding probabilities, but here the probabilities are given right. So, determine, determining an interval including a fixed proportion of sample mean. Let us look at this example. Find a symmetrically distributed interval around mean that will contain 95 percent of the sample means. So, mean is 368, standard deviation is this and sample size is 30, 25. So, what we have to calculate? Here we have to calculate the uh, upper and lower limit 
within uh, within 95 percent of confidence level. Okay. So, let us look at this since interval is 95 percent. So, the uh, remaining area is 5 percent. So, if you look at the 5 percent, so it is it is in, in lower tail it is 2.5 percent and in upper tail it is 2.5 percent. Now, from uh, z score table we can calculate what is the uh, value of z when uh, certain probabilities are given. So, let us look at this. So, wh what we are saying in here is this is your mean let us say this is your mean okay, and this is your 95 percent area. Okay. So, this is 95 percent or 0.95 this side is 2.5 percent and this 2.5 percent is not it. So, this becomes 100 percent or 1. Now, when this area is 0 0.9 5 this center what is this area 50 percent of this is 0.475 is not it. Now, let us look at what is the value of z. So, just divide this by 2 you will get 0.475 right. Now, look at this table look at this z table and see where that area is 0.475 let us look at this 0 0.475 0 0.47 0 0.47 yeah here it is right 0 0.475 points this 0.474 is 0.475 is not it. So, what is the value of z 1.96 right this is 6 and this is 1.9 1.9 is here is not it. So, till now what we were doing we used to have z values and we were finding probabilities. Now, in this case we have probability and we are finding z value right. So, z is 1.96. Okay. So, this how you can calculate z value from z table right. So, lower limit is equal to mu plus this and upper limit is this actually this is this is minus mu minus okay so xl is we know that mean has already been given 368 in, in our question mean is 368 isn't it isn't it n is 25 and sigma is 15 right. So, n 25 and sigma is 15. So, this becomes 362 and upper limit is this 371. So, what we will say that between 362 and 373 uh, th this is the uh, the me mean around which uh, uh, when the area is 95 percent these are the x values is not it. So, 95 percent of all sample means of size this are between 362 to 373 right. Now, let us look at what is the effect of though we have already seen the effect of n on standard error. So, let us look at this when n is equal to 25 standard error is 3, but when we increase n then our standard error decreases right this is the relationship. So, as we increase sample size the standard error decreases. Now, let us look at population proportion. So, far we have talked about population mean right. So, let us look at population proportion. The proportion of the population having some characteristics let us say in a class there are 
30 percent students who are writing with left hand or let us 3 percent writing with left hand right or let us say uh, there are 10 percent students who have got height more than 6 feet right. So, that is nothing but population proportion and we can always estimate population proportion from sample proportion. So, this sample proportion P is an estimator of population proportion. Okay. So, sample proportion is this, it is number of items in the sample having characteristics of interest divided by sample size. So, P will always be between 0 to 100 percent and P is approximately distributed as normal distribution of course, when n is large. So, sampling distribution of P earlier we have seen the sampling distribution of mean here sampling distribution of proportion. So, this is sampling distribution of proportion it is a normal distribution right similar to the sampling distribution of mean. Now, if you look at approximated by normal distribution. So, this is n pi is greater than or equal to 5 and n into 1 minus pi is greater than or equal to 5. So, we will say that the, 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 the population proportion is this and the standard deviation of proportion is this. So, almost relationship is same here it is also uh, how, however, it is uh, denominator it is n is not it in, in case of this what it was it was sigma by root n is not it, but here it is n right and this whole under root. So, the value of z can be determined in a way in which we determine the value of z for means right. So, z is equal to p minus pi divided by sigma p right and we are we know that sigma p is this is not it. So, let us work out an example if the true proportion of voters who support a proposition a is 40 percent right. So, we are saying that in a population uh, there are 40 percent people who are supporting to let us say a candidate A. What is the probability of what is the probability that a sample of size 200? What is the probability that a sample of, of size 200 yields a sample proportion between 40 to 45 percent? So, here population proportion is known you have been given the p values let us call it p 1 and p 2 just like we have seen earlier x 1 and x 2. So, first of all calculate z value and before that z even you should calculate sigma p right or the standard deviation of proportion. So, standard deviation of proportion is 0.034. Now, you are supposed to convert it into z value right. So, when small p is 0 0.4 right when p when p is 0 0.4 this is your z value 0 because pi is 4 right. Now, when p is 0 0.45 z value is 1.44. So, you should look at how would you draw this curve what we what what which area we want to find out this is 0 and this is 1.44. So, we are interested in this area. Now, this can be calculated by looking at table. So, what it was 1.44 right. So, 1.4 is this and 44 is this. So, 0 0.4251. So, we will say that this is the probability for p ranging between 0.4 to 0.45. So, in today's session we have seen how to 
how to solve questions related to proportion as well as population mean. In next class, we will discuss some more points related to sampling and sampling distribution. Thank you.